Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, October 15, 2023, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. On a karmic level, every person has a unique inner emotional prison, and this is part of their unique soul's destiny. Every human came here to release the lie their soul was fed. They came to re-experience the feelings of being confused, rejected, abandoned, hated, suppressed, depressed, and stuck in order to transcend them all. We needed to step harder on them on hiding in our shoe or the thorn hiding in our shoe. We needed to step harder on the thorn hiding in our shoe in order to stop hiking up this great mountain and remove it with love. At some point every day, we each run into some feeling of being stuck, blocked, or challenged by something or someone. We feel limited, small, powerless, and suppressed from our full expression. Every human mind already has the program installed to throw itself into some emotional dumpster repeatedly. There are many little thorns hiding in our shoes that we are unaware of. Thus, something terrible happens in the outer world. We get dumped by a lover We end up trashing our self-esteem, our love for life, our feeling of being empowered, and falling into some treacherous feeling of being locked up in an emotional prison we cannot escape from. All of this thorny karma that we carry may sound terribly depressing, yet it's good to remember that this universe is more loving, mysterious, and intelligent than we could ever imagine. There is a very beautiful yet unobvious reason why this divinely intelligently, deeply eternal loving universe is more loving, mysterious, and intelligent than we could ever imagine. There is a very beautiful yet unobvious reason why this divinely intelligent, deeply eternal loving universe has set life up to throw each and every one of us through experiences of emotional pain, agony, and suffering. The reason is so that we stop everything we are doing and become deeply inspired to evolve in a spiritual dimension. The spiritual path is the only way we can remove all our thorns and break out of our thick mental and emotional prisons. The only problem is that the mind tends to get lazy and wrapped up in old habit and would never search for the keys to our spiritual freedom unless we felt deeply trapped, imprisoned, or stuck. The mind loves to create these emotional prison cells in the brain as each one provides new fuel to blast off into a new experience of creativity, growth, evolution, movement, and eventually reach total liberation. So we all have these wonderfully perfect prickly prisons constructed inside us. Each one is destined to create a deep yearning and desire to be free. We can reject this idea, ignore it, or accept it. Just notice what happens inside your body. Either way. This search for freedom is as much our destiny as the prisons we've placed ourselves in. There are no real enemies in this world. There are only imaginary shadows. The thorns in our shoes can be removed once we realize that they are also created by our own imagination. We must choose to move beyond the mind through the unconscious righteous mind that believes it is aware yet is truly ignorant and not worshiping the great mystery 24 hours a day. It is this ignorance that is our only real enemy. 
the mind that is deeply stuck in thought, in ego, and will only strive to create something new when some form of horrific pain, fear, or slavery begins bubbling up inside. The mind is imagining everything that you're experiencing right now. It is believing that your thoughts, beliefs, and all your limitations are real. It is entertaining the feeling that being financially stuck is real, or that your relationships are never going to improve, or you'll always live in some house, the same house, forever. It has this idea that whatever challenging life experience you're having right in this now moment just may be that way forever. The sensations of emotional imprisonment sure do feel real. Yet when we step back from them, we see they are just a conglomeration of negative thoughts. When we step back from the mind with awareness, we can understand that we are the ones who have thrown ourselves into jail with our imagination. From this awareness, then, we can step out of jail just with using our sweet, simple, yet all-powerful imagination. One who knows the self has nothing more to do, nor has he any more thoughts. From then on, the infinite power will carry out all future actions that may be necessary for him. Ramon Rishi. To acquire an out-of-jail pass, we must gift it to ourselves. We must choose to accept that everything and everyone in this life is a part of this deep, sweet, holographic, infinite mystery. In this acceptance, we stop feeling limited. We see how our imagination is co-creating everything, designing this entire thing we deem as reality. Then and only then can we understand what it takes to be free. By knowing what is creating thought, we stop believing in all of its fantasies. We believe that any potential feeling of slavery is a choice from here on out. We understand that we always have the free will and choice in how we wish to interact and engage with any thought that enters the mind and can keep it like a winning lotto ticket or toss it away like a used banana peel. So my invitation right now for you is to not hold on to any beliefs that show up about yourself, others, and this life. Choose the mystery over certainty just because it is more exciting. It's simply more interesting to not know than to know. When you're living within the mystery 24 hours a day, you suddenly find yourself becoming spontaneous, free from hesitation, doubt, and barely have any fear. It requires all the courage you have to keep choosing the mystery over the normal way of being human. Yet you're much more likely experience, you're much more likely to experience your fears as some weird bubbling state of excitement that's something you run from. You might even see your life as this wild, passionate birthing of random desires to short your life is going to last. How long or short is your life going to last? So why not start embracing it now? When we embrace the mystery as a way of living life, the mysterious way keeps us truly alive. We start abiding in a state of wonder and deep curiosity about everything. We stop defining who we are and start realizing that truly we are actually indefinable. We start seeing amazing intelligent energy 
is here now, directly in front of our eyes. So there's, there's, there's steps that we go through, right? We can either be mas you know, mastered, the servant, all right, of those steps, and that would be through the ego mind, or to choose to be the master and commander over the ego mind and then practice staying and being in the now, and discovering just exactly who and what you are in that body. And I've said this a thousand times, but it is all about you. We, you know, there's a lot of confusion on this planet. Because we engage in things, and then we wonder why they just don't seem to work out, right? We engage in things, but we don't understand why they don't work out. Because we don't understand ourselves. And in a lot of cases, a lot of people don't love themselves and don't have faith, trust, and confidence enough in themselves to understand that they're the master and commander of everything. You create your life. It's a, that's, the, that's a simple thing. You create your life. Now, doesn't it make sense that when you truly, deeply, and intimately know yourself, right? How much different it is is that when you engage in any type of relationship, Because it's a bottom line thing. If you don't love yourself intimately and deeply, you're not going to do that with anybody else. Now, you may think so, right? And we're, not, we're talking way beyond. There's romantic love, and then there's a love way beyond romantic love. Now, we have certain things. Where do they come from? Now, if we were master and commander, and we're talking through the heart mind, not the head, we would be fearless. We wouldn't worry. We wouldn't stress. We wouldn't have anxiety. Since we are in servitude to the ego mind, which is, all, which is an illusion, we're in servitude to the ego mind. It is the master and commander. How do we know this? Look at the planet. It's not difficult for any of us to view and understand how much of this civilization is a slave to the ego mind. What would change on this planet? The majority of us discovered that we were master and commander. There would be no conflict. There would be no worry, no stress, no fear. There would be joy, happiness, and bliss. There would be contentment and peace. And we would be in the now because that would be totally by choice and we would have mastered it. Where does it begin? It begins with us mastering ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean we need to manage every single thought, micromanage everything, control everything. Ego mind is about control, right? It's about controlling everything. Many of us find ourselves in this repetitive merry-go-round of wanting to be in control of everything. When we aren't in control, we become frightened, stressed, anxiety-filled, and fearful. 
you can see the variance between the illusion of the ego mind and you acknowledging and understanding that you're master and commander of your life. You can determine how you want your life to be. Now we've heard throughout the ages that destiny, it cannot be changed. Your destiny cannot be changed, right? That's crap. You can change your destiny if you want to. And you don't have to do a forcification of it. It's just with ease you shift. Is it possible for you to have the life you want? Absolutely. For every one of us. There's no if, ands, buts about it. And then you have a lot of people that say, well, you know, it doesn't work for me. What doesn't work for you? Again, that's the ego mind. Oh, this spirituality and going within and finding myself and the true God that I am within the body, and that worked for me. Because you were so controlled by the ego mind. You were mastered by the ego mind. You're a servant of the ego mind. The ego mind's highly insecure. Worry, stress, fear, anxiety come from the ego mind. Now, see, when we talk about mind, we're not talking about brain. Okay? It's different. It's not brain, it's mind. Mind's the illusion. Brain is the organic. It depends on where we're at and how we view life. You might have been programmed or raised, brought up, programmed, to believe that life sucks. Maybe you heard your parents say that, life sucks. You know? Or parents that say you get old, then you die. Different things like that, that ledged and, and engrammed or programmed into your brain. You identify that. It's a conditioning where you're told you can't do this and you can't do that. Or we can't afford that or we can't afford this. That's impossible. You can't do that. That's crazy. It's never going to work out for you. See, these things, we don't realize it, but they imprint us. They're, they, they become imprinted with our ego minds. You're never going to amount to much at all. You might as well forget about it. You're never going to be successful. These things are programming statements that we take in and register in our subconscious minds. And then the subconscious mind plays it back. So you can see how you go through life and you, you embrace these things. You, your, your imagination tells you you can't do that. That's not possible, right? So you just say, okay, fine. Rather than understanding, that's, that's the ego mind dictating to me on what I can and can't do. Before programming, we have no limitations. We have vast imaginations. We can grasp many things. But as we become programmed, those things become cocooned. They're there, but they're covered. Some of us will jump out of a plane at 10,000 feet. Others of us would cower in fear to do that. You see the, the difference there. We're here to enjoy life, not to fight it. So by learning and understanding that you've always been master and commander, but the way you were programmed never allowed you to be master and commander. 
the master and commander within all of us is there. We have the ability, okay, but we don't know how to bring it to the surface. Would anything on this planet be happening? Now, you have to understand that is it just with mankind? Is the ego mind just with mankind? Are, are other civilizations plagued with ego mind? Where they are the servants to ego mind? That's not hard. It's not difficult to identify. Not judge, but to identify. So if you have interstellar wars going on for millions of years throughout the galaxy and universes, what, is, what constitutes that? Ego mind. Have you met so far in this lifetime someone who is not ego-minded, someone who is heart-minded, and you could feel it? And no matter what you did or what they were exposed to by others, they were always heart mind. Where you may say, hey, Jim, doesn't that bother you, what they said? You don't seem to be upset at all. Jim's response is, I'm not. I love them. Huge difference. That's not a forced thing. That's a natural rhythm. Now, when we're interacting with each other, right? Interacting, talking, communicating. What? How many of us are influenced by our ego mind? How many of us are not master or commander and are servants to the ego mind? So, you know, you're in conversation, talking, someone says something, ruffles you a different way, you know, ego mind. Now, some people say, well, if you're in ego, if, if you're in heart mind, you're like a zombie because nothing bothers you. So, no, that's not true. You're only bothered because of the illusion of the ego mind. The ego mind is what causes you to be bothered. Now, when you're the master and commander, you've identified that through the heart mind. You're different. Do you know why you're different? Because you now know that the universal abundance flows to you and for you, not against you. You also know that what you think about, you create what you focus on. This all shifts because you become aware of it. So you wouldn't say to yourself, well, I'm going to focus on death and destruction, which a lot of people are right now on this planet, focused on death and destruction. You're going to say, I don't care to focus on it. I'm focusing on this. Maybe a walk in the park. Maybe a hot cup of tea. Could be anything. And you flow along. You float along. You're not in it. Say, you're not of it. You visit it. That's about it. You know that you are temporary. The body that you're in is temporary. You know that you will leave it. So every moment is the now moment, and you stay in the now to enjoy the life. When you become completely in the now, your perspective and view on things is, is totally changed, totally different. 
you don't experience hate anymore. You don't experience anger from the, from the viewpoint of, you know, violently angry. And you don't ridicule yourself. And you're in a high vibrational harmonics. And you attract what you desire. It's huge. You discover that the, the, the universe streams of abundance have always been there. But when you're controlled by the ego mind, when you, when you are the servant to the master, the ego mind, you stop the flow of abundance. Well, how do we know this? Look at the planet. Look at the civilization. Look at the starvation. Look at the murder, death, kill. You, you can see it all. Why are so many people asleep? Because they're the servant of the ego mind. <clears throat> and the ego mind is superior in the area of fear, anxiety, worry, stress. It's very insecure and it's never satisfied. That's why when you look at the factors on the planet, and, and most of us can when we step outside of it, when we leave the mind alone and all we do is view and watch, we don't judge, and we can surmise things. And we, can, we know what creates it. And on top of it, those that are heavily steeped in the ego mind, that are servants to the ego mind, are aggressive. I have people talk to me and they say, well, why aren't we out there fighting, killing, destroying? Because it lowers our vibrational frequencies. Well, then, how do we do certain things? Because there are people out there murdering and, you know, killing. Because some of us choose to do that in order for it to become better or good. Because, unfortunately, some of us cannot be rehabbed, so to speak, or remastered. Now, when we do that and we go into conflict, right? We maintain a high frequency, harmonics, and we know that the reason that these existences need to be removed from the planet. Now, ego mind instigates what? Mobs, terrorism, you know, sporadic conflicts, death and destruction. That's ego mind. Now, when you look at the fact that many on this planet are not only ego mind mastered and programmed, but they're bicameral. Right and left brain communicating with one another. That's when you hear voices and you swear up and down that, you know, the devil made you do it. Or God guided you. And every day I see how people are manipulated. Doesn't make them 
good, bad, or indifferent on what they do after they've been manipulated or subverted. But it's interesting as you watch to see how many of us are controlled. When the God within us is wild and free, how crazy is that? This is why we choose to do things. Pretty much, I mean, you, maybe you could say that someone forced me to do something and that in reality they didn't. You complied, maybe through fear, anxiety, worry, stress, whatever, but you complied so it was your choice to begin with. So they really didn't force you. You did. And this isn't a self-prosecution or to oneself or to get down with oneself. It's a higher education for all of us. When we can, we view others, we view ourselves, we see a lot of similarities, not totally, not all across the board, but we do pick up similarities with others. We identify the fact that, you know, that reminds me of something I would do. Or they remind me of me. Or that one right there is completely the opposite of me. So we have all of these avenues and all these others that we interact with. And what do we do with that? We learn. We learn. Somebody might do something and tell you about it, and then they tell you how it, you know, how it how it ended up. And then you would ask them, well, would you ever do that again? And they would say, no. So you've actually learned for something they did that didn't work out because of how they did it. Many of us are in a repetitive cycle. We keep repeating every day how we are. And then it's funny because we expect to get different results out of it. But we keep doing things but we get the same results. So it's always a, a shift where we can shift, take the right, you know, take the right instead of the left. You know, go straight on instead of left or right. And isn't it interesting how many of us will be looking at something that's unknown, right? Because we don't know. We don't know the outcome. We don't know what's going to be involved with the process of it. It's all unknown. Many of us choose to step away from that. But some of us, we go full ahead. We just, we're more in the heart-mind. We go full ahead because we know the unknown is where all the possibilities are. That's the adventure. What would you do if you knew every single thing, every single day, as long as you're in that body, that was going to happen with you? How long do you think it would take before you were bored to tears? That's why we spice things up. And we're not... We're not cognizant to it, that we're creating things every split second, but we aren't aware of it. Strange things happen, but we don't usually identify with it. You might be thinking about a, a certain food product or something, and, you know, and I haven't seen that in a long time, and all of a sudden you see it. Or you're talking about somebody, right? You say, wow, I haven't seen this person in a long time. Next thing you know, there they are. Now, we don't correlate that. See, we don't look at that and say, I did that. I manifested that. We just say, oh, that's a coincidence. All coincidence means is that it's a word that we use to explain things in a way that we don't understand. 
That's why we use coincidence, to explain things in a way that we don't understand. Now, being a master and commander is everything. And it is an ego. It's heart-mindedness. You know. You know because you've chosen to know. Now, an ego-minded, mastered person would look at somebody and say, wow, they're, they're huge, they're overweight, they, they're horrible looking. A heart-minded person would look at that person and say, there is a God within that body. And that's the God that I love. You ever notice that, that this civilization is highly visual? That we, we, we receive a lot of energies and frequencies by visual, by seeing, looking, and then everything else starts kicking in. What it, depending on what it is you're looking at or seeing and how you respond to it. You ever notice that when, say there's an accident on the road, right? How many people slow down and look and see what's going on? Because we're so curious. Or when there's, you know, there's something happening, everybody gathers and asks each other, you know what's going on over there? No, I don't know. Do you know? No. That's why I'm here. Maybe somebody here knows what's going on up there. Once we genuinely, heart-mindedly understand that we are the master and commander of everything, we, we design our lives. Most of us don't know it. We think it's a force from somewhere else that's outside of us. We create our destinies. They are not written in stone, as many people have been programmed to believe. We choose to love ourselves or not love ourselves. We choose to be aware or we choose to not be aware. You ever had something where you said to yourself, I'm, I, I don't care to hear about that. Have you ever done that? Someone's talking and you go, I don't really care to hear about that. Please don't discuss that with me. Or if something's going on and you take, you take a left turn, you say, I, I'm going this way, I'm not going to, I don't care to deal with that. That's low frequency, it's a negative energy, I'm aware of that. But you know why we're aware of that? Because we've done it before. And we know, you know some of the things that draw on us because of stepping into it. So then you start manifesting, so you start saying, I would like to be around people that are on the same page, you know, that I can talk with, interact with. We can commiserate. Instead of people that I keep coming across that don't really understand things. And no matter how much I try to get them to understand things, it usually backfires. So what's the best thing? To not try to get them to understand things. Do you focus on the people that you want in your life? And you know that the only way that you're going to track that is to increase your harmonics, your vibration. Okay? You've listened to music. We all know that music affects things. Right? It affects plants water, fire, air. It affects everything. And some of it we can't see with these eyes. Some of it we can. Those are frequencies. You know, at a certain pitch, that pitch, that high frequency, can shatter glass.
And everything is a frequency. We are frequency. So you can understand that if your frequencies are jagged and sporadic, you are in lower frequency. When I mean lower, I don't mean it's interesting because the uh, the dark matter, lower survival frequencies, can at times be high, but not in the realm of bliss, joy, peace, love. So there's a polar opposite. And a lot of people will say, well, how, how am I going to do this? How am I going to move myself first to understand myself, to face anything that I have been suppressing in my life that I've carried with me, the traumas, all of it? How am I going to do that? How does one go from being angry, disgusted, and irritated happy, blissful, and joyful, unless there's a catalyst out there that, that affords them to do that. So the ego mind is where it's temporary. You do, you do have temporary bliss and happiness and joy, but it's short. It's fleeting. And so the ego mind wants more and more and more and more and more. Now, when you are master commander, you choose and you know, and you say, I'm not going to indulge or engage in that type of thinking because you're the master commander over your ego mind, so you can literally use the ego mind as a vehicle. So you can say, we're not going to do that. That's a negative. That's a low frequency. That's a drain. It's a draw. It's heavy. I know that because I've experienced it before, and that's what you say to yourself. I know this. I've experienced this many times. I don't care to experience that anymore. Because we then begin to, believe, we begin to understand that by being in heart-mindedness and master and commander, we start to understand that you have the power to determine and choose what direction you're going to go. you will find yourself becoming detached from expectations and attachments. That's ego mind. Fear of losing something, right? Um, fear of not having. That's ego mind. And when you, you, you finally come full circle... And you say, so the ego mind actually dictates on how I'm going to live my life. Yes. Well, then what the heck is the heart mind for? The heart mind's there. And we do, we do dip into the heart mind at times, but we're not cognizant of it. It's like, have you ever... Have you ever been in a situation where you were so passionate about something, whether it be anger or love, that you felt it come right from your chest. It wasn't, it was emotional, it wasn't your head, it was from your heart, mind. And some, uh, many of us don't know that, but when we really express ourselves and really send something out because we're so passionate about it, that is heart-mind power. And guess what? That huge energetic wave of heart-mind power goes to the universe, and the universe answers that request. You've been in a situation where you say to yourself, you don't want, but it's very passionate. Okay? Could be out of frustration or something. And you get. So how, does, how do people do that? You practice going into the now every moment you can. And at first, it's a tug of war because the ego mind 
It has no intention of allowing you to go in to the heart mind and the now. It has no intention because it's not there. And remember how insecure it is. So it's not there. Do you think it wants you to go there? No. It will do everything it can to keep you and yesterday and tomorrow relentlessly. You could go into meditation. Next thing you know, you're wandering around. Right? You could say, okay, I'm focused on the now. Next thing you know, you're off into several different directions. Usually yesterday and tomorrow. A lot of us are concerned about things in tomorrow and not living in the now. We're living in tomorrow. And a lot of us live in yesterday. Isn't it interesting? But it's a choice. It's a choice by all of us. We make that choice, whether we're cognizant of it or not. And all these things, all these things that the ego mind instigates with us, like worry. Worry is an, is, is an effect of us not trusting our spiritual connection to this universe. That's with everything. That's with worry, stress, fear, anxiety, pain, anguish, sorrow. Not trusting our spiritual connection to this universe. Not trusting the universe. Which means we don't trust ourselves. So in the quiet time of this meditation, concentrate on knowing, knowing the difference between your ego mind and what that means, okay, to be mastered, to be the servant of the ego mind, or to be the master and commander through heart-mindedness over ego mind. What's the difference between the two? Well, in heart-mindedness, in the now, when you send something out, when you focus on something, you send it out to the universe, it will manifest for you. It's that simple. In ego mind, when you send something out to the universe that you desire, 99% of the time you're not going to get it. Why? Because you aren't aware that you're stopping yourself in your own abundance, that the universe keeps sending you. And many of us do it every single day. I'll join you in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
take an easy, slow, deep breath through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out the mouth. Remain still. You are needed from the smallest grain of sand on the beach to the largest galaxy in this universe. Everything is necessary to create perfection and balance in creation. Your existence on this planet is a vital piece in the great jigsaw puzzle in life. Do you know how annoying it would be to organize and complete a billion-piece puzzle, finally figure it all out, and then realize you're missing one last piece? Your life is more important than you know. You are greatly needed. The best thing is there's no pressure at all. Just be yourself. However, your showing up today is exactly what this universe needs. While you're hanging out here, relax and enjoy your naturally sweet, soft heart presence. There is nothing more amazing, healing and guiding for us to experience in you. Maybe the best thing of it all is that your heart's present can be felt while you're doing anything. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here Monday, October 16, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's happening around you or within you.